so this is pmp shortcut it is given to you guys um has index in section one so i'm going to start off with scope management the things which we have done in the class um, what do we do in scope management we plan for scope we gather requirement and then we declare scope which is in scope out of scope assumptions constraint um, one person cannot do the work so we break the scope in scope items into a smaller component um, which is called WBS my team afterwards create and uh, deliver the you know deliverables um, at the time of execution i test the deliverables and get sign off on the deliverables from the customer where do i do testing of the deliverables it is done in the qc um, which knowledge area is qc you guys know that we discussed it in quality the um, the next thing which we do and the, these are the details which we have discussed in the class um, at the time of requirement we create scope management plan and requirement management plan plan how are they different scope is basically to deal with how do i deliver the component or deliverables requirement is what do my customer want um, so there are different techniques which we decide here we decide for methodology prioritization um, how do i prioritize the requirement you guys know this now uh, any template you would want to use traceability metrics we discussed it it's there is a video available at youtube and how do i validate requirement scope management plan on the other hand is how do i arrive at the sign of baseline what is baseline the agreed uh, scope um, so how do i arrive at the agreed scope who's gonna sign off on the scope um, what are the uh, how do i deliver it meaning um, do i deliver the deliverables iteratively phase wise or do i time box it you know what is time box um etc so uh, we plan for scope how do i gather requirements we um we can do brainstorming you guys know the keywords now interviews what is the keyword for interview um you should know that by now focus group uh where the workshop what's the difference between them focus group is similar domain and workshop is people from cross domain Questionnaires and surveys, you guys know this now. Benchmarking, Delphi, we discussed that. Um, you have the keywords as well. Context diagram is a way to represent the information. Prototype is one of the best ways to gather requirement. And at the time of requirement gathering, you can get a sign off on the working deliverable that way you are very sure this is what customer want so one of the best method to gather the requirement storyboarding is another uh, way of prototyping um, used in visual uh, domains for example you might want to use in ad or um, you might want to use it anime in the animation domain um, I can represent data using affinity diagram, mind mapping, and so on. What is affinity diagram? Um, let's look at the keywords. They're going to come later. So um, when I talk about requirements, requirements can be explicit or implicit. Um, what is implicit requirement? The requirement which people think um, and do not tell you, they assume. So it's very important uh, for you as a project manager that you should be able to gather both the type of requirement. So explicit, we know these techniques and implicit is benchmarking and observation. So anything which is not being said, you can benchmark the standards or comparative products and find out what is that which is equivalent to similar kind of products or services 
observations, you know, the keyword, how do I present the uh, requirements. I can show context, prototype, story, boarding, mind maps, affinity. You guys know it by now. Then I go ahead and develop the scope. Um, we do product analysis. What is product analysis? I look at the similar type of functionalities to understand the product better. In case there are previous versions, I would look at those versions. Alternatives is how do I deliver the next phase? Um, just take an example um, of you know a house. Do you do pre-built assemble or do you do brick and mortar? You know um, we discussed it in the class. Um, then we go ahead and develop the WBS. Um, how do I go ahead and develop the WBS? We look at the entire pro project scope statement. I look at this and then I decompose. Uh, whom do I decompose it with? I decompose it with my team members or the SMEs. I go ahead and this is a core concept you should know. We plan for WBS or deliverables. Uh, my team delivers the deliverables. I do not show the deliverable to the customer directly. Rather than that, I do a QC or testing, which is called verification process uh, or QC process. And then I show it to the customer in the process called validate scope. Uh, just remember that process name because it's going out, but still it's a good idea to remember it. Um, so customer does the acceptance in the uh, validate scope process. So um, how do customer do the acceptance? The scope baseline, what was scope baseline? The work that has to be done, which is agreed with the customer. So customer gonna look at that. You gonna show verified deliverables. What are verified deliverables? QC deliverables. Customer gonna inspect. Um, and then either say yes or no to the deliverables. We also discussed um, Agile and uh, different events in Agile. So um, let, let's recap that. Um, first of all, let's look at the artifacts in Agile. So first artifact was product backlog. You, what is product backlog? It has all the requirements or all the things which needs to be delivered to the customer or to the external world because remember we spoke about how, how does product organizations are structured and how is project organizations structured. They can be captive organization um, and so on. So um, product backlog is the work which needs to be done. The, who is the owner of this particular artifact? The product owner. At the time of sprint planning meeting, the uh, team and the product owner discuss and select the subset, um, the things which can be put into the um, the iteration, uh, the team knows what is their capacity. So based on the capacity and how do they know the capacity, if they are doing it for the first time, it's going to be random or, you know, gut feel. But if they have done the previous iterations, they know there's something called velocity. You guys know that by now. So um, based on the velocity, they're going to select the story point and then would agree to deliver certain uh, PBI items. What is PBI items? You guys know that by now. So the team meets every day for 15 minutes and discuss what they did yesterday, what is that which they're going to do today, any risk or issue or impediments. Um, it's required that the you know project manager or scrum master help become a servant um, leader and help the team to become more productive. At the end of the sprint, people are gonna review it. Who are those people who are gonna review the deliverables? Um, so product owner is the customer here. He should be there, he or she should be there in this meeting to see what the team has delivered. Um, there could be requirements out of this particular review those requirements does not go automatically to the next iteration. Rather, they would become part of the 
uh, product backlog based on the priority, based on whatever product owner and the team thinks the value it brings, it may go up or go down in the priority of the product backlog item. Um, the team has to deliver shippable product every time. It is the product owner who decides whether this increment, you know what is increment, This the, the new version goes to the production server or not. There is another meeting which is called Sprint Retrospective Meeting. What is that meeting all about? The meeting is to become much more productive as a team. So um, the things which are discussed here is what went well, what could have been better, creative ideas and stuff like that. Um, so that the team takes up uh, the things or processes which worked for them and eliminate the processes which did not. So, um, so these are these uh, ceremonies we know, daily scrum or um, daily stand-up we call that. Instead of using sprint nowadays, PMI is using the term called iteration. We guys know that. Now this is the um, you know keywords here, focus group, questionnaires and surveys. You guys have discussed it and it's there at one place for all of you. Affinity diagram is grouping of ideas, observation, shadow, reverse shadow, etc. Um, when can it be used? All of that is written. Context diagram, an example of context diagram. Um, so you have this in this document. The WBS terms, what does it mean? Um, what is rolling wave planning? Uh, or what is progressive elaboration? I, I don't think in this patch I explained it to you guys. But it's like this, you know, um, if your project is six years long, Instead of planning for every detail, you know, for the sixth year, we don't do that. We plan the entire plan in broader perspective and we plan things for detail only for the upcoming um, phase. The reason for that is I would have a team here. Uh, I know the risk here. I don't know what are the risks at this point of time, who is going to be there as part of my team and so on. So it makes better sense to utilize your, um, your um, planning here for the current phase rather than spending time to detail out the plan for the, you know, long in the future phase. Okay, this is the um, this is the example which we did for the WBS. You guys uh, prepared the WBS for this. This is the um, you know one of the WBS which I liked and I put it out for you. Uh, the, we also discussed agile estimation, story point, planning poker and t-shirt sizing. Um, so agile um, estimation which is done in which meeting you guys know that um, so the team meets and think about you know what are those items I can pick up and take for the next iteration it's easier to because we're talking about two weeks or three weeks or maximum four weeks of iteration it's easier rather than talking about you know how many days things gonna take um, you might want to do rel relative estimation, which is, you know, is the story big or small and so on. So story point could be, um, you know, is it one, two, three, four, five, which is Fibonacci series, or it could be, um, it could be from the t-shirt sizing. Is the story uh, small? Is that PBI item small, max, big or Excel size? Can it fit in this iteration? You might want to play a game to understand how does everybody think about, you know, um, any PBI items. You can use planning poker with cards. In the cards, typically it could be a Fibonacci series um, numbers which can be written. Or it could be Excel or story points of the t-shirts are written. 
so you decide as to what you want to do planning poker is a type of technique which is also known as delphi technique what is delphi anonymous and unbiased way of getting information now planning poker do you do anonymous no but you do use unbiased so um one way of using it we also discussed uh, requirement prioritization method what are those um kano model talks about the um the requirements can be divided into different qualities must be is uh, to have it must you cannot release anything if it does not have that quality for example you cannot have hotels without rooms um one dimensional qualities uh, anything which if you look at it if you uh, work on it it's going to give you satisfaction or customer satisfaction if you slightly ignore it it's going to give dissatisfaction uh something like you know um how many staff you should have at the hotel check in check out counter so if you have lesser staff there's going to be problem because there is lot of waiting time if less staff it's going to be lot of cost for you sorry if more staff lot of cost for you um but customer is going to be happy so you need to take a balance and you know work on that attractive qualities are also called usps unique selling proposition so you need to you probably would want to work on this and understand what is attractive quality for your product why people should buy it indifferent is you guys know that reverse you know that moscow is another way of uh, prioritization which is must have this is would not okay so there are some i have not revised it because i lost the word file for this um so must have should have could have and would not have as of now um paired comparison i spoke about it you have different uh, pbi items you pay you do a comparison and you get a sorted list of the stories or pbi items 100 point method is a method wherein you give certain points and you ask people to pay for the pbi items and people select the one which get maximum point the stories which get more points are selected for execution dot voting is similar to 100 point instead of points you give dots to people um again we count the dots and the dots which are more for a pbi item we select that for execution you just get you know what is um what is that which people want we also uh, discuss the concept of time box a previously agreed time during which the team works to complete the goal after that if the team so time box is predefined time and that's the basic difference between um the new modern agile uh, way of developing stuff and predictive uh decomposition you guys know backlog grooming you guys no dor dod we discussed it in detail um we you guys also did how to write stories um what is the format of writing a story so we discussed that so this is for you for your reference we also discussed mvp minimum viable product you have video for it about scheduled management um what do we do remember we created a wbs in scope so we get the requirement we understand the total scope we get baseline done um we create the wbs and then we start of defining the activities what is the difference between wbs and activities wps is the deliverables activities the work needed to deliver the deliverables for example i we discussed it in the class um if the deliverable is food then activities would be to order food serve it and so on so we define the activities um each activity would need to have some sequence dependencies so we gonna establish the sequence 
we define the durations um, we also would define the um, you know as part of resourcing what are the resources required to complete this activity there may be certain constraint we apply those constraint constraint could be like you know we need to finish it before this time in two people cannot do this only this person is required to do this and so on so we develop we put the constraint and then the final schedule um, you know looking at the constraint like customer wanted before this time and so on we develop it so um, schedule management plan would have what is the tool which we're going to use? What are the units of measure? It is, is it days or weeks or hours? Um, how do we report the progress? What is the level of accuracy of estimates? Release and iteration length. Um, we define uh, the activities by looking at the WPS, looking at we de decompose it further and the outcome is the list of activities extra information about activities like you know if there is some dependency and stuff like that and the milestone what is a milestone you guys know it by now a significant point which can be used to raise invoices or communicate efficiently and so on we sequence the activities once we have activity list we check the dependencies we you guys know leads and lag what is a lead lead is uh, doing ahead of its time and lag is waiting time um, these are the dependency types we have finish to start which is mostly used start to start finish to finish and um, start to finish we discussed the example of this in the class in detail um, how do we arrive at estimations we would have analogous estimate what is the keyword for analogous you guys know that parametric three point is of two types um, beta and average you know the uh, calculation for that bottom up is most accurate but most time consuming um, we discussed all of these things in the class then we develop the schedule as i told you we um, look at the activity list milestones risk which could be a problem resource availability any agreements any other considerations and then we do a lot of what if analysis we also see what are those critical activities which has zero float um, is an is a resource assigned more than its allocated hours or is this resource working parallelly or sometimes the resource is sitting idle so we check resources allocation optimize it you guys know leads and lags schedule compression is um, sometimes as i told you in case there are time constraint then we need to um, you know fast track the work or we need to crash the work what is fast tracking doing the work in parallel crashing is um, allocating more resources crashing um, would re need more more resources and hence more cost fast tracking would require you to see what are the activities in parallel so how do we find out which activity can be moved in fast tracking the ones which have a dependency which is not mandatory discretionary dependencies remember we discussed that we also discussed critical chain um, so these are the keywords which are given for you analogous is similar bottom up is activity wise parametric calculations three point most likely pessimist optimist average you have the formula here BERT or beta you have the formula here um, velocity we guys you guys know velocity we discussed what is velocity the total story point completed by um, agile team in an iteration in case an agile team has done four or five iteration then it is the average we also discussed on-demand scheduling what is on-demand on demand is um, the work goes to the um, if there are different stages to a production unit 
then the production unit which is um, you know it's like this customer demand for a car then only the start of the car manufacturing happens why would you have on demand scheduling that way resources are not sitting idle um, in case of physical inventory it does not get rusted and so on we discussed this concept in detail we also discussed kanban boards iteration burn down chart is you know um, what is the it's the way to monitor what's going on in your agile team this is an example of iteration burn down chart we also discussed iteration burn up chart so you know what is a burn up chart is like this okay um these are all the um, you know keywords for you activity on note pdm diagrams critical part total float free float we discussed that that's it let's start off with cost management cost management what do we do here we plan for cost we estimate for cost and then we work with our senior management to determine the authorized budget and then as the project progress by we control the cost um, what's there in the cost management plan we would talk about what is the unit of measure it could be hours days um, it could be dollars kilometers some like roadways project we have kilometers um, you might want to write what is the estimation level of accuracy we discussed about it there are two type of accuracy we'll talk about that as we move on unit of precision rounding off uh, what are different reporting format the template uh, control threshold this is uh, something which you know from the quality management module um, so what is control or uh, upper control limit you would write it over here so um, you know what can happen in case you spend more than 25 percent extra of your budget so you need to write it here that this is something i cannot go beyond um, additional information could be dollar conversion rate funding choices and any other information you have um, then we estimate the cost. How do we estimate cost? Based on activity attribute. Remember we had activity attribute or we can take WBS as um, you know one of the foundation uh, blocks and then estimate cost for each WBS. If you want to do bottom up estimation then I would take up activity attributes, activity list uh, resource calendar resources would also have a cost um, and then I would use them in the bottom up estimation what is bottom up when we break down everything and then do precise estimates it takes time three point estimates um, you guys know parametric is doing calculation like per square feet uh, per line of code and so on analogous is at a high level uh, of similar project we would also look at alternatives while we decide for the cost reserve analysis you guys know now what is reserve analysis looking at what can go wrong and how much money should i put in to um, you know withstand that risk um, a risk is um, people leaving the company um, people not skilled so you might want to have that risk to counter it you would have trainings you would have backup resources and so on so those reserves are used here uh, cost of quality is um, how much testing how much prevention how much um, how much do you test so that would be um, i have a slide you you you've gone through a slide on this um, so all of that gonna be added to the total cost then we arrive at a budget how do we arrive at a budget with senior management we provide the cost estimate which i've done with my peers and smes and i would have basis of estimate as well because my seniors can ask you know how did you arrive to this budget and my seniors gonna then aggregate the cost it could be infrastructure cost which i've 
probably have forgotten and they would look at historical um, way the money spent on similar type of project they might consult an SME and then they would also look at you know what do we do I have sufficient funds or do the project have sufficient funds uh, to carry out the day-to-day -day activities. That phenomena is called funding limit reconciliation. And then at the end, they would approve some budget for me. Um, you know what is phased estimate? Estimate for the phases. Rough order of magnitude estimate at the initial phases, you know, top down. They are also called ROM estimates. Definitive estimates is as we move forward in the project, we become better in estimations. Um, so accuracy is minus 5 to plus 10. Remember the uh, ranges here. Cost baseline is approved budget, approved agreed. Funding limit reconciliation, you guys know. Contingency reserves, management reserves. We discussed on this a lot. These are the formulas. Just remember the formulas. Um, this will help you look look at the uh, you know questions. Moving on to quality management, we do three things here. Very simple. We plan for quality. Um, we we might have an external um, entity called quality manager who's gonna come visit us or some department whose manager is going to be interacting with us. Um, so I, as a project manager, going to work with that department to plan for quality. Um, there, this department might come and do audits here. And then we do uh, control qualities, basically the testing of the you know deliverables. So what do I do in plan quality? I would um, see you know what are those things which I need to really put in in place so that my product or services, whatever deliverable I'm making, are error free. Um, so I would work with my team to understand what is that which I need to do. We can do brainstorming, um, we can do benchmarking interviews, you have all the keywords with you. Uh, how much quality do I put in? Uh, which would be justified for the entire overall benefits which I receive. So cost benefit analysis, cost of quality um, is that slide which we discussed, appraisal cost plus prevention cost plus uh, the cost of waste. And we also plan for how many um, rounds of testing, um, what kind of testing going to happen and so on. So um, at the end, what do I get? Uh, I get a quality management plan at the time of planning. So here we write, you know, why are we doing it? Which standard are we following? For example, for healthcare, you might have HIPAA standard. Um, for medical, um, other streams, you might have different standards. For data integration, you have integration standards. Um, what is the audit frequency? Uh, what is the meaning of non-conformance? You write, we write all of them in the quality management plan. Which tool am I going to use? We write that roles. You might have a quality manager. As I told you, you know, some external entity may be part of your project. Um, then we write what are the matrices which I'm going to measure. Um, so it could be um, matrices like, you know, failure rate or number of defects. Um, it could be a percentage of tasks completed on time. Some of the organization might have um, the, the metrics as um, attrition rate, um, customer satisfaction or employee satisfaction. So uh, we write what is that which we're going to measure. This is the cost of quality slide. Um, what is cost of quality? We have prevention cost, which is, um, you know, how do we ensure that errors do not happen in the process? So we have trainings, um, checklist, and so on. Then we have appraisal cost. What is appraisal cost? Um, testing of the finished deliverable. If the finished deliverable 
has to be reworked that is internal failure cost it is still okay because you have got the errors you have got the error within the organization the external failure cost is more this is the increasing cost graph um, it could be product recalls or it could be just saving your face um, so loss of business warranties um, the cost is highest here so the idea is we increase the cost here and here and ensure that we not many bugs or many defects goes out to the customer then we manage the quality at the time of execution while my team is working um, there are audits which happen on the project uh, my team think and design for a particular attribute the x is the attribute x could be extensibility x could be scalability x could be usability all the elites here um, safety and so on um, we would solve the problem in case there are problem we would do rca and then go ahead and solve the problem this is the way problem gonna be solved um, these are the steps just go through them um, and see what are the tools can be used at each step this is just um, some example of the tools you might want to use various other tools as well um, then we control the cost um, how do i control what is control cost or qc we test the deliverable so testing plans are the input and deliverables are the input if you look at it we do inspections um, you know which is we look at the product um, which is made by my team a product could be project plan high level design or it could be code it could be application and so on so we do inspections or testing and we analyze the quality by drawing the you know histograms control chart Pareto chart scatter diagram trend chart i give you um, the keywords for all of them i think you should have it here trend analysis is one variable over a period of time process analysis is done by using flow chart uh, rca ishikawa diagrams uh, technical performance is defects and analyzing the defects why defects are happening um, cost of quality total cost um, benchmarking audits you know all of them metrics diagram different type of metrics diagram histograms um, pareto scatter run chart you have all that information and keywords different type of sampling attribute sampling is either pass or fail variable sampling is data is in the variable form you we we discussed this right uh, control chart is um, for predictable performance of a process we create control chart um, so there has to be some uh, predictive average which i or a mean and then allowable upper control limit or lower control limit if the um, if the data is between the ucl and lcl these are still okay the process is in control but if the data or the observation goes beyond that if you have an observation here then we would see why that special cause has happened and we would look at the rca we do root cause analysis Um, there is also rule of seven if you have seven consecutive observations at one side of the um, you know mean and ucl or mean and lcl then also the process is compromised and we would also at this point of time do um, rca we also discussed the difference between quality and grade you did a let's play on that you guys know regulation don't worry about de facto de jure um, iso 9000 series we know this this is one of the quality standard which are typically used what is risk management what is risk 
um, risk is something which is for future and it may happen or may not happen um, so risk has a probability and if it's going to happen it would have an impact the reason projects are different than operation is because project are slightly riskier in nature because we are doing it for the first time so it's better to to do risk management here we plan for risk we identify the risk um, we rank the risk or analyze the risk and then we look at what could be probable responses and then we keep on at the time of my uh, team working i keep on checking whether if, if a risk has arisen are there any um, you know new risk in the process and i keep on updating my risk plan and risk register so my risk management plan would have um, various things we discussed about appetite different guidelines like you know this risk can be outsourced this type of risk are always transferred the formats when do i track what is the definition of probability and impact um, roles you can have a uh, special risk given to somebody to manage uh, what are different money contingency reserves which i need to put um, risk categories we discussed about this and uh, the timing to do risk control or risk update so we identify the risk how do we identify the risk i can normally work with my team do brainstorming i can look at assumptions and constraint analysis i can do swot analysis i can look at the document the contract and so on and find out what are the risks but this going to give me just few aspect of the risk it would not give me a consolidated list to look at a structured way and a consolidated way to um, you know expand to each and every categories like legal sometimes you forget if we are technical um, so a prompt list going to help you look at the risk from uh, you know total coverage perspective um, so use prompt list it could be a customized categorization or categories of list or it could be an industry standard prompt list we we'll discuss the industry standard prompt list let's say if we have it there um, once i have identified the risk i am going to find out uh, what is the probability of that risk and what is the impact of the risk is the data quality good or not did i talk to the right people to understand the impact or probability of the risk um, and if there are any other risk parameters like urgency etc or you know these are the other risk parameters and there are examples of this you have a video on this in the lms and then we plan for risk responses we have strategies for threat strategies for opportunities what is a threat the thing the risk which can take money out or uh, what is opportunity the risk which might give me money back uh, or save the money so these are opportunities contingent response strategies are the ones which are huge risk risk like um what if if the disaster strike on this particular location then we have dr plans disaster recovery plans and these are you know step by step plans um so we would um, look at the bigger risk and maybe organization looks at them at their level and the strategies for overall project risk this again is done by a portfolio manager to see what are the is this project riskier project and they would decide on you know how do we handle the project overall um so for threats we can use avoid mitigate transfer accept and escalate what is avoid avoid is probability should reduce to zero and we use another response we use a different plan um or different activities but using those different activities can lead to different risk for example if traveling by car is problem then i use a helicopter but 
helicopter may crash. So secondary risk comes here. Um, mitigate is, we use this word a lot, mitigate is either reducing the probability or reducing the um, impact or both. But then you still have some residual risk which remains and we keep on monitoring that. This is acceptable level of risk. Something like, you know, taking an umbrella for the rain. Uh, you still have risk of getting wet. Uh, transfer is no um, changes or no management of risk probability or impact, but we have given the ownership to a third party. Except is doing nothing, escalate is to um, escalate it to senior management and uh, make them the owner, let them decide on the risk. It would be done for, you know, business risk. Uh, similarly, for um, opportunity, we have exploit, increasing the probability to 100%. We do it. Share is, um, we make partnership with other people. We say there is this opportunity wherein we can make money. Um, but this is riskier proposition. We should be able to make a lot of money if we come together. So we share uh, both of the partners me and my vendor make money. Enhance is increasing the impact of the opportunity. We say let's try and increase the impact and try and increase the probability of accept is do nothing, escalate is um, again making your senior management handle the risk. Um, we have all the keywords here. Prompt list could be predefined category of risk. You have pasture, teacock, VUCA, uh, contingency plans I explained you. Procurement management. What is procurement management? Very simple, I plan for procurement. We do make or buy analysis, then we conduct the procurement uh, for whatever we have thought that this is what I'm gonna buy, this is how I'm gonna buy. I've done that, all of that at the time of planning. So um, at the time of my project execution, I do the actual procurement. It does not mean I get the product. I go. It's not like going to shopping mall and saying, you know, let's buy a t-shirt. Um, we buy servers, we buy people, uh, experts. Um, so here I select the vendor who's gonna provide me those resources or services or product. So I select the vendor here and then vendor goes back home and then they provide me the required services or product and I check those services and product, which is control procurement. So at the time of planning procurement, I do make a buy. We um, also do source selection analysis. What is source selection analysis? Source is a seller. You guys know that. And we do market research whether this kind of sellers or services are available in the market or not. And then I come out with um, make or buy decisions. Um, that is the first thing. If I think of buying the thing, then I would need statement of work. Um, what is this? SOW. Remember your customer gave you statement of work so that you can estimate. Similarly, here you are the customer. From the seller perspective, we're going to give procurement statement of work so that my sellers can estimate for the work which I asked them to do. Um, we would also decide on how do I select the seller. Um, is it least cost? Um, so these are the seller selection criteria. Least cost could be one. Qualification uh, could be another, like, you know, 10 years in this uh, domain, 1,000 people in the organization. It could be quality-based. Um, I look at the product, I say, give me the samples and I say that. Or it could be the, you know, proposal when they design the solution. I look at the solution design and I say, yeah, it looks like pretty okay. So we give marks here. Uh, so it could be based on the um, score of their offered solution or the product. It could be both, you know, quality as well as cost based. So I can have, you know, some table wherein I can write both of them and quantify it. 
Sole source is one single seller. We can have some special condition when there is only one seller available. But as a buyer, you don't want to be in that position. You, we guys discussed it. And fixed budget is um, the buyer, which is you saying, you know, I have this much of money. Whoever comes in can pick up the project and do it. So that's fixed budget. Then we discussed about the contract type. Fixed price, um, cost plus, and time and material. So what is fixed price? Fixed price is when I have a good SOW with me. So my sellers can estimate and can give me a good, you know, estimated price. So they can say this is the specification, this is the price. Uh, so it becomes fixed price. Um, in case the specification change, they're going to ask for more money um, but in case specifications are pretty you are pretty confident then it works for you uh, cost plus is when i do not have sow at all um, then i would say okay you come and do the work for me why because i do not have i really don't know what i want so let's explore it together i'm gonna reimburse you for all your work as well as all your services so the seller is a happy seller here um, and time and material is uh, the hybrid of these two both of them and uh, you recognize tnm material tnm uh, contract by using rate or per hour per square feet and so on whenever you have a rate for any service that's a time and material contract um, for a buyer, the lowest risk for a buyer is FP contract um, and the highest is CP. The hybrid is TNM. For a seller, the lowest risk for seller is this CP. They are happy here. If a seller gets cost plus um, contract, the seller gonna be really happy because they are getting reimbursed for all the work or deliverable which they are producing and they are getting their services cost as well. TNM becomes um, slightly okay because they are they have margins per square uh, per rate of unit. And FP becomes really bad for a seller because um, anything, any risk emerges, they are the one who's going to bond the cost. Um, so that's the reason there are, uh, you know, seller and buyer's objectives are slightly different. Let's talk about how we do project. Um, if you are from PM Box 6, we call that integration management. So the uh, first thing we've been talking about, you know, how do we develop scope? How do we control schedule? How do I work with quality and so on? Here, I would look at, I as a project manager has to take care of everything. So if I'm the PM or if I'm the development team member, I would be planning, I would be doing the work, I would manage knowledge, manage changes, do status reporting and close project or, or you know the phase so these are few things which i have to do irrespective of um, whichever knowledge area which we have read so far um, so i develop the project plan how do i develop the project plan i look at lot many plans and i work with um, you know my team members and i create a project management plan you have gone through all of these uh, tools and technique. Um, we also discussed the difference between what goes in the plan and what becomes the document. What are the plans? Um, so we discussed that there are plans like um, scope management plan, requirement management plan, um, scope, um, schedule, then we also discussed um, quality, we also discussed um, risk. So we create all these plans. We also have something called baselines. Um, these are the baselines which you have. 
um so yeah so it's here we have plans and these are the different plans which we discussed um and then we had uh, these baselines what is a baseline the agreed and approved plan in general um everything is agreed and approved that's why uh, you know a project plan containing all of these gonna have versions um we you, you would also have documents what is a document anything which changes very often i may not want to put that in the as part of the plan because for if i need to change a plan i need to go ahead and take a sign off from people rather than that i would write that you know i'm going to be writing down stakeholders here and then these stakeholders list can be seen here um and i can add or modify the you know stakeholders here so uh, a document is something which changes often and you can decide you are the project manager you decide what goes under planning or plans what goes under the documents um deciding which goes where is also called artifact management also called configuration management um at the time of doing the work i would work with issues um check if there are new new risk uh, my team going to be producing artifact and uh, i would be managing knowledge so let's see um what else we do we discussed how do we do um how do we manage changes what is a change um we have a change management plan um we have the um ccb defined at the time of change management plan itself um and i would have meetings with these uh, bigger guys you know who are there in the ccb people who can approve the changes people who can understand what's good for their portfolio so these are busy guys i would have a meeting pre planned meeting with them and as the project progresses i may keep on getting changes from stakeholders it could be a customer it could be me my estimation can go wrong i need a change in the schedule uh, so a lot of changes can crop in i need to do a proper impact analysis um, for each change and when the meeting um, time came, comes i discuss them in a you know interactive meeting a uh, wide interactive meeting because there might be questions by the ccb so i present the um, crs along with impact analysis what is a cr change request um the ccb going to ask various questions like you know what do you see should we do it should we not do it they might discuss it amongst themselves and at the end they would have uh, updated um, cr here with decisions um, decision could be you know approve declined i need more information and so on when you come out from this meeting what would i do for all the approved changes they so any change which is approved now has to be implemented to implement that change it has to go under the project plan and then the plans gonna change so i would go ahead and do a rebaselining of the plan you guys know that what happens in case of agile project um, how is the change management applied in the agile project we discussed that um, and then um, you know just recall that discussion agile is change based um, the iterations are very small so no change from the um, stakeholders are entertained within the iteration in case somebody asks for a change you refer them to whom product owner the product owner decides um the product owner has this big document what is this document called this document is you guys know it it has pbi pbi items product backlog items so product backlog items based on you know whatever is the change suggested if the priority is high it goes up and in the next iteration of planning it is discussed and then if required implemented we also discussed knowledge management what is knowledge there are two type of knowledge um tacit knowledge and explicit knowledge so the whole idea is i should be able to capture the tacit knowledge 
um, capture it where as a document or as recording as certain articles or minutes of meeting all of these becomes part of the OPA that's the uh, thought process and these OPAs can be utilized by other project managers um, so the OPAs are called repository at some point of time when my customer accepts the deliverable or close the project if the um, guidelines change or in case there are problems financial problems or whatever reasons um, the project is terminated even at that point of time we close the project officially um, what do we do here we create a final report we also get into a retrospective meeting find out what did we do good what could have been better um, all the documents are updated and given to the PMO for to be become part of the OPAs and the final product or service the one which your team was working on has to be handed over to the customer or has to be archived so all of that is done these are few of the um, you know shortcuts variance analysis you guys know that planned versus actual retrospective we know that i don't know why i've written it twice um, here configuration management version control lesson learned register repository scrum of scrums we discussed it uh, it's a meeting wherein a representative in case your work is bigger mm. than you know few people we have representative who comes and discuss their work so that it should be compatible with each other so we start off with business environment what is business environment um, and what's there in your course um, so in in the course uh, business environment deals with how the seniors portfolio manager or product owner looks at the entire world um, three things which are very important for you to understand so how does uh, senior management governs the portfolio so governance um, value management um, how the projects are initiated or killed and risk at the overall portfolio perspective uh, risk also include risk from if you do not um, compliant with ongoing regulations so compliance risk and um, risk from outside world so all those risks would need to do changes in the you know structure processes and so on so how uh, would you work with changing environment how would you ensure you um, as a project manager help being you know send the status report where exactly do you comply with governance what happens in value so this is the overall perspective of the business environment so if you look at portfolio governance um, we would look at goals and principle how do um, the senior managers um, look at the portfolio so there are certain principles like you know we and these are deci decision principles for example in case I have two choices which one would I go with so it could be sustainability work-life balance it could be going green um, so whatever is the portfolio vision or, or making profits um, the practices are oversight control decision making and integration what does it mean um, how do I see the portfolio so most of your senior manager would want to know a, a dashboard a company level or program level dashboards so how do they see what's going on how do they control what's going on so you would see you know the phase gates this is for controlling of understanding and controlling if something is going wrong um, how do they make decisions um, and integrating all the functions components like when i say component it means project and programs both um, so adding them all of them together the activities uh, to help enable these practices are performance reports change requests um, escalation path and they may use certain other people like you know sponsor portfolio manager could be or sub portfolio manager who's gonna help them quality organization who's gonna do audits and provide reports um, again part of control and oversight the value management for portfolio um, 
is maximizing the value. See, understand there are two things which are going on in the portfolio, basically, either programs or operations. For operations, we do, um, you know, how do we maximize the value out of the operations? So there are value analysis. We discussed it in the class. Process re-engineering, we go with how do I ensure that this process is lean and thin, um, for new uh, portfolio component, there are always certain opportunities which comes up. So evaluating the opportunities using IRR, PV, NPV, ROI, cost benefit, we discussed it in the class. And uh, checking the value in uncertainties like simulations and decision tree. What is a decision tree? The example of that is EMV. Uh, please go through that. Evaluate is um, checking whether things are going as per the right, right, um, you know, plan as well or not. This is like variance analysis for you. Um, so we evaluate like um, using certain techniques like product backlog grooming. Uh, what is it? Product backlog has to be groomed so that the um, valuable component comes on top. Sprint reviews, checking whether the team is doing the right work. A-B testing, you guys know that. Uh, compliance management is to, uh, at a portfolio level, let's say you're managing healthcare, you're managing security or infrastructure. So what are those things which you need to comply with? So identify the compliance vis-a-vis -vis product um, think about, you know, Maggie as the product, what is the compliance, so health compliance, what kind of salts to be used, and process compliance, how it is made, you know, what is, is the process compliant, are you using right methodologies, um, so to identify those compliances, ensure that those compliances are uh, put in, in place as default, so making policies, and ensuring those policies are used. Um, another uh, way of ensuring the policies work is using checklists, prevent errors to happen. And assessment, review is assessment. So we prevent and we also check whether people are still making mistakes or not. So we do reviews. Uh, project management sending the review reports, so we check that. We meaning uh, the portfolio manager here. And uh, the, remember we had quality organization or quality or PMO in the other words. So audits can happen. Audits also give the governance report to senior management. Sampling is on the product. Audit is on the um, process. And change management may apply. As I said, you know, in case there are governance required, a policy uh, has to be implemented then the changes to the process gonna happen. So help the organization understand why a change is initiated and then help the organization to adopt to it. That's the way project managers need to look at all the changes. Um, portfolio manager also decides on what kind of organization do they want to run with uh, based on the kind of work um, a portfolio manager may decide to have a projectized organization or a metrics or functional organization. What is projectized? The one wherein PM is the boss of everybody. Functional, the one where operations or functional head takes um, the people in and metrics is combination of both. You would have two reporting bosses here. We discussed PMO types. PMOs are uh, the custodian of OPAs. It's a support organization and uh, it helps the uh, organization to become mature vis-a-vis -vis project execution. Uh, so support best practices. Um, if you look at your organization, it can have different names like RMG quality, process improvement, excellence group. It's custodian of OPA, different uh, three types of PMOs. Um, read them, just be aware what is their control. Um, we discussed OPAs and EF. EFs are the ones which are beyond, uh, you cannot do anything about these, um, you know, environmental factors. They could be within the organization or outside the organization. 
as a project manager you need to be aware and you need to work with these um, limitations OPAs are the ones which help you to become more effective uh, examples are lesson learned historical information and so on these are the uh, you know certain things just keep them with you look at the keywords and be there the next section is uh, people so we're gonna start off with people management here stakeholder management what is it I plan uh, for these stakeholders I identify them and uh, talk to them I would seek out a meeting to understand how interested they are on my project and uh, sort out their information need uh, based on their information needs I would manage them uh, communicate with them uh, and manage the relationship and uh, in case it is not working the way it should then I take appropriate action um, to identify these stakeholders I would need to look at agreements involvement I do stakeholder analysis I may need to represent them in certain scenarios um, you have seen the grid and the cube and salience model I hope it should be there yeah this is a cube which we discussed in the class so let's look at what is stakeholder this is the slide we discussed in detail a stakeholder can be uh, identified using various dimensions these are the dimensions we had and you can have many others uh, we prioritize stakeholders um, as to who should be um, engaged in case there is a demand from two stakeholders at the same time who would you prefer to respond first um, how do I represent these stakeholder we use grids or cubes salience is um, a grid is two variable cube is three variable and salience is three variable we discussed that we also discussed direction of influence wherein you are the PM and uh, anything above you is upwards below you is downwards and um, then your peers which is sidewards a stakeholder could be uh, supportive or leading we discussed the colors here a supportive can be a green color uh, you know stakeholder leading is dark green they are actively working on your project resistant is red unaware they don't even know so you might want to reach out to them first to ensure that they receive the information in the right manner and uh, they become supportive neutral are those people they understand what's going on but um, they neither support you or nor uh, they are resistant we spoke about communication management communication and stakeholder go side by side based on the interest and information needs of a stakeholder I plan to communicate with them then I actually communicate with stakeholders and then in case the you know overall engagement and communication is not working I change in case people say hey I don't know what's going on then I would know that these are interested not getting the information I change their uh, grid and start working and sending information or engaging with them accordingly what is communication exchange of information we discussed about this slide you have this slide with you um, we uh, discussed forms of communication 5c very important remember this um, we plan for communication see stakeholder register is one of the input and we spoke about communication technology models method what is a model um, wherein you have sender receiver method is interactive pull and push we discussed communication channels please remember that this is something which we discussed remember the terms you might have certain questions on this method which one is the most effective method to communicate interactive so remember that whenever there is you know customer escalation whenever there your customer or your boss wants to sort out something always select interactive communication so whenever we talk about stakeholders if there is a question in the PMP exam the out of all the options if you have any option we suggest you know go and meet pick up a phone and talk select interactive communication 
just remember active listening uh, these are the explanation go through that we also discussed about team what is team how do i define my team for um, based on the work which i'm gonna do uh, which is defined in the wbs i get team members on board um, once i have people on board these people come from different background different belief system we work as a unit we develop trust the project manager ensures that there is trust in the team the team is skilled enough to work and we manage them on ongoing basis we also discussed about team plan which has these and team charter which has um, you know the values how do we make decisions and so on organization charts which we discussed gives clarity of what to be done to your uh, team members raci we discussed about remember the full form of raci how do i build team if people are not available at the you know co located we get them virtually from different locations people can be pre assigned for example agile projects you would the first thing which we do is get the members on board so pre assign before we start doing any work um we need to negotiate with rmg or any other uh, you know functional head to get better people on the project we develop team by getting them co located so that the trust develops um we get people to be motivated by recognition and rewards um, i would use my interpersonal and team skills to um have better relationship with my team members um it's it's advisable to understand how your team is visa visa a particular skill set so we do skill assessment it's not a appraisal skill assessment and then the trainings are you know the kind of training could be on the job training or mentoring or um self learning or online learning or a classroom training so based on you know whatever is required we decide on the training so once my team is developed they are trained they have enough trust with them i start managing my team so um the team may get into conflict we manage conflict i use eq to understand people aspirations and work with them show leadership influence them and then uh, there are days when the team is not together in case we need to do certain things we build consensus um there are different consensus we spoke about first of five um roman voting up and uh, down terms and then polling which is unanimous um you guys know it now uh, let's talk about um, team stages we had um, an a very nice exercise on the team stage we had uh, tuckman ladder who spoke about team stages that the team come together forming storming norming um performing and adjoining we did let's play on this uh let's talk about conflict management there are different ways uh, conflicts are managed we can move away from the conflict we can uh, talk about not the conflict but better things in life uh, which is smoothing accommodated compromising is you know making a decision but people are not happy you know that forcing collaboration is uh, the best way to deal with conflict but requ it requires time and patience and trust with each other types of power just remember the type of types of power um, there is a video in the lms just go through that there is also um let's play on types of power these are the theories to motivate people there is a video in lms please go through them these are important you gonna get questions on this maslow's hierarchy of need is really important go through that remember the you know ladders here um paired programming is two people working together you know developer tester or two developers one taking different roles so one is a lead developer the other one observes and after some point of time another one takes over the second one develops and the first one observes so um that's a concept in software um moving on we also discussed about um servant leadership 
theory x and y is important theory z is also important please go through all the theories it's there in the lms video um, in the lms you have let's play in the lms this is the pmp shortcut um, you know the document it's there available in the lms and uh, i wish you all the best i hope this video has uh, summarized all the concepts for you in case you need something else to write to me and i'll be happy to i wish you all the best thanks bye bye have a very nice day